I'm Caleb Squires, and this is my group video mod project on Module 3 and the four descriptive methods of data collection. The first method is called naturalistic observation. That would be something like observing a squirrel in a backyard, or if you're standing on a dock and there's a pond and you're observing a brim swim around in the pond, or a duck in the pond, um, or anything, any animal that's in its natural habitat, or human inside their own house, you know. Obviously, that's natural to them. That would be their natural habitat where they live. Um, this is a good way to get a lot of good data because there's no controls, there's no laboratory settings, anything like that. It's just it's natural. Um, an example would be if you wanted to see what temperature white-tailed deer eat the most corn at. You would go out to the woods, put a bag of corn out, um, make sure that there's corn each and every single day. And you would just observe the corn. Anytime deer came, it would record how many deer came, how much they ate, how long they were there, um, and then write down the temperature. And you would do this for a numerous amount of days. And that would be a naturalistic observation. You're observing deer in their natural habitat. At what temperatures do they feed the most in their natural habitat? Um, pros and con type thing is deer are very intelligent. They have a great sense of smell, even better hearing. You would have to, you know, be very still, be very quiet for all day long, for however many days you sat there. Um, have to have a cover scent because anything that's out of the ordinary that deer smell or hear, they're not going to act natural. They're very skittish. Um, I've hunted them for a long time, so I know how they act in the wild. Um, if you know they hear anything, you know, the, the drop of a hat or um, you moving in a chair, anything, you know, they're not going to act the same. They're going to act skittish. If they smell anything out of the ordinary, whether it's you or um, a coyote or, or a squirrel, you know, anything that, that they don't like, they're not going to act the same. So that's a con. Um, a pro is it is their natural habitat. And if you take deer out of their natural habitat and bring them into a laboratory setting, you know, with fake trees and fake bushes and fake dirt, you know, they're, they're going to know. Um, and if you put corn, you know, in a, in a laboratory controlled setting, um, you're, in, and you set the temperatures and see what, you know, what temperatures they eat the most at, it's not going to be affected because they're not going to act the same as they would in the wild. So, um, kind of a hit or miss deal there, but it is a very effective way to get, to get data. Second is, Laboratory observation, that's when you actually do bring things into the laboratory. Um, an example would be showing an infant its reflection in a mirror. Um, obviously, you can't just walk around the mall and any mom pushing a baby around in a stroller just put a mirror in front of it. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing that. Um, you would actually bring in infants to a laboratory controlled setting, and whether you wanted to put them in a room with a mirror in it and just observe them until they themselves went up to the mirror. Or if you wanted to, you know, show them a, a one-sided mirror and see what their reaction might be, um, there's numerous ways to do that. But you would have to do it to uh, several amounts of infants um, to to have accurate results. Um, but that's a laboratory setting. The third is called case study, and that's to study a person and get facts about them and say, okay, they're this way because of things that happened in the past. Um, saying somebody is shy because they didn't have brothers and sisters or attention when they were younger. Um, that would be um, not exactly an accurate um, accusation, but it's, you know, it, it could be, it could be an experiment. You know, you could get 10 people who are shy and ask them questions or, you know, look back into their background and see, hey, how were they like when they were younger? What kind of things have they been through? Um, how how was the family life? How was the, the home life? Was there fighting? Was there yelling? Was there friends there? Was there not friends there? Was there things for them to do? Um, all those things that, that were in their past can add up to you know how the person is now. That would be a case study. The fourth is called a survey, and that's exactly what it is. It's a survey. It's just you going up to... Uh, you know, numerous amounts of people and asking questions, um, whether it be, you know, in person or by the phone, you could do an internet survey, um, anything that, you know, is a question and you ask 
a group of people. Say you have a hundred people in a room and you want to know how many people uh, like summertime. Obviously you would go around the room, hey do you like summertime? Yes, no, kind of. Is that your favorite holiday? Yes, no, kind of. Um, that would be a survey and um, it's not always a great way to get data because obviously people can lie um, to try to make their answer sound more sociably correct but um, it is another way to collect data um, like I said a lot of times people might not tell the truth just out of sole fact they don't want you know you to make fun of their answer or then be embarrassed of their answer so it's not always a great way to get data collection but it is an effective way